banning trees job in life is to mitigate layer two loops because without it, we indeed would have layer two loops when we had parallel paths in our network. Take a look at our beautiful topology right here. We have four switches, switch one at the top, switch four at the bottom, two's over here on the right and switch three over here on the left. And we have these red dotted lines. Now, what are they? Well, I'm glad you asked. Those dotted lines represent crossover cables. And I've got those ports configured as trunks on the switches. Now, if we turned off spanning tree, here's what would happen. If a broadcast was injected into switch one, for example, let's say I'm VLAN one, it would forward that broadcast down these trunks. Let's just follow this path. Switch three would forward it back over to switch two. Switch two would forward it back up to switch one, and we'd have a loop going counterclockwise. Not only that, we'd also have a loop going clockwise because that same broadcast would start out here and go from switch two to switch three and switch from switch three to switch one. So not only would we have very, very high bandwidth utilization, but we'd also have very high CPU utilization on the switches as well. Not a good scenario. The other thing that's going to happen is whoever started that broadcast, maybe it was a client doing an ARP request, that client source MAC address goes down both of these ports. So switch three is going to think, oh, that MAC address lives off this port, FA19. And he forwards that, that frame on to switch two. Well, at the same time, switch two receives that from switch one and forwards it over to switch three. And so switch three thinks, oh, no, that MAC address lives off this port, 19. Oh, wait a sec. It lives off 21. And we're going to have a MAC address flapping because we have two loops that are actually happening, one going clockwise and one going counterclockwise. Now, what I'm going to demonstrate with you right now is something you should never do in a production network. And that is I'm going to turn off spanning tree in this parallel environment where we have more than one path, and I want to show you the damaging effects of a literal broadcast storm. So to do that, we're going to go to each switch, and we're going to turn off spanning tree for VLAN 1. So we'll go to switch 1 and simply go config T, no spanning tree for VLAN 1, and it's done. We'll do the same thing for switch 2 and switch 3 and switch 4. So we're going to turn this off again. This is a very, very bad idea because if users were on this network and they were trying to get their frames across, they wouldn't be going because of all the congestion that's being caused by the broadcast storms, which we're about to invoke upon the network. So there's switch three. It's having spanning tree turned off just for VLAN one and switch four. We'll do the same thing. All right. So now spanning tree is turned off effectively for all of them. Let's go up to, let's go up to switch one. And let's clear the counters. We'll start everything off from scratch. And with clear counters, it's just going to wipe all the counters clear. And then we'll take a look at the details for just this interface, FA0 slash 23. So we'll take a look at how many bytes and how many packets and how many broadcasts have been sent. So here's the details for interface FA0 slash 23. And if we go down to broadcasts, it's very, very few. In fact, zero broadcasts and zero multicasts. We're about to change all that. We'll go up to, let's create a logical interface. Now we could have a client connected on one of these ports in VLAN 1, or we could just create a switched virtual interface that could generate a broadcast. Let's do that, it's easy. We don't have to go to a separate device. So let's do a show VLAN brief. See what VLANs we have in existence. Okay, so just VLAN 1, which is just fine. And we'll say config T interface VLAN 1. And now this is the logical three, layer three interface that can communicate with that VLAN and devices in that VLAN, I should say. And then we'll give it an IP address. IP address, let's give it 1.0.0.1, .0 just like that. And we'll say no shut. All right, so that VLAN interface should pop up here in a moment. We'll verify it's up with a show IP interface brief. And we'll say, please exclude any unassigned IP addresses or any, any lines that have the word unassigned in it. There we go. So that interface is up. So this is not nice, what we're about to do. I'm going to generate a single broadcast. Now, what could we do to generate a broadcast? How about a, an ARP request? If I try to ping 1.0.0.2, and I'm going to say repeat count of 1, although it won't matter because he won't be able to get past the ARP resolution, it's going to generate an ARP request in VLAN 1. That ARP request is going to be sent down this trunk and this trunk because by default, Trunks are allowing all VLAN traffic. So we're going to have a VLAN, uh, the broadcast go down 
to switch three and down to switch two. Switch two is going to send it over to switch three. Three, switch three is going to send it over to switch two. And it's going to be basically a loop going counterclockwise and counterclockwise. Not fun. All right, so there you have it. One ARP request. How much damage have we really done? Well, <laughs> let's go over to switch two for a moment and take a look at what's going on. He's complaining that the MAC address, this guy's MAC address right here is flapping. This is switch two on the right between port 21 and port 23. So he's seeing that source MAC address show up on 23. He's seeing it show up on 21. And that's an error message regarding that behavior. So that's, what a, that's one of the symptoms, by the way, of a layer two broadcast storm. And let's go back here and do a show interface. It's in the, it's in the history. We'll do a show interface for FA0 slash 23 and see what it shows us. Check this out. Yep, that's a lot of numbers there. So how many is that? That is 1,448,1210 broadcasts. And then out of all those, there was eight multicasts. So it's, that was one ARP request that generated that and is just looping around the network. And other broadcasts from other devices would be more. So there's going to be a, quite a bit of sluggishness on this switch. And if we do a show process CPU sorted, we can see how busy the switch is. And it says, well, Keith, you got me working pretty hard. I've got a one-minute average of 59, five-minute average of 27. But eventually, the five-minute average is going to go up to 59. <laughs> because, and this is, a, this is a 3560 fairly decent access layer switch that is just basically struggling to survive. And if clients try to send traffic, they'd be in bad, bad shape. So the very first th we, thing we had to do is we had to go back and turn on spanning tree on all of these switches to restore some sanity. And then we'll take a look at how Spanning Tree is identifying and stopping the loops. So we'll go to switch one and we'll simply turn on Spanning Tree for VLAN one, because that's the one we turned it off for. And we'll also go ahead and do that for switch two. And we'll do the same thing for switch three. And they're breathing a sigh of relief once Spanning Tree kicks in that, okay, we don't have this loop anymore. There's switch three. And fantastic, and switch four. All right, so now peace has been restored to the galaxy. If we do a clear counters back here on switch one, just to make sure everything's nice and fresh. And just for grins, let's also do another ping, just to generate another broadcast, just to demonstrate that the broadcast is not going to be looped around and around the network because spanning tree is taking care of it. And we can do a show interface for FA0 slash 23. That's the same one we did earlier. So now we did a broad and see it saw the broadcast. And we may have it may have tried twice when it didn't resolve it the first time. But you notice that we don't have over a million broadcasts because we have no layer two loop any longer. So that's the introduction to the importance of spanning tree. And now I'd like to take a look at why spanning tree does what it does and how it makes its decisions. The very first thing I want to do is point out that I've made switch one the root of VLAN one and VLAN two by specifying a priority. And the priority I set was 4096, which is a lot lower than 32,000 and change that switch two and switch three and switch four have. So switch one is going to be the root because of how I've manually configured it. Now, from that perspective, let's do a show spanning tree for VLAN one. And if you only have one VLAN, you can say show spanning tree, enter. It'll show you everything, and that'll be VLAN 1. So this is showing us a couple things. The very first line here, this is all the information about VLAN 1. With per VLAN spanning tree plus, if you have multiple VLANs, you'll have multiple instances of spanning tree. One per VLAN. So with one VLAN, only one spanning tree. And it's showing me who the root is as far as their priority. Now it's 4096, which is 4096 for the priority plus the VLAN number. So it'd be 4097. That's how Cisco implements it with the, ex the system extended ID. And then this is the base MAC address of the root. Now that base MAC address, how do you find that? It's not assigned to a physical interface. If we did a show version, I'm going to just simply do an include. So I only want to include lines that have the word base in it with uppercase B. And there's the base MAC address. So part of that big show version output is the base MAC address. Now, it just so happens that because I manually configured switch one with a priority of 4096, 
it became the root. So it says, this is information about the root. This is his base MAC address. And this is, and it's me. <laughs> so I was like, woohoo, it's me. And this is the hello time, the Mac age, max age time, and the forward delay that the root is going to propagate and force down across the entire spanning tree. See, it's good to be king. If you win, you get to control these numbers. Now, those are the defaults. Now, the next piece is the piece about the switch you're looking at. So in this case, the bridge priority is going to be the same because we're on the root. So all this information here is going to match. The base MAC address is the same, and the hello timers and everything else is because we are the root. Now, we're going to be forwarding on every single port. And I want to show you a command because that's what uh, root switches, by the way, forward on every single port. They're, every port is designated for that VLAN. And one thing we can do is take a look at the details of these ports. This is one thing that a lot of people don't often do. We say, oh, yeah, the root's forwarding on 19 and 23. But what's really going on? Well, let's take a look at show spanning tree for interface FA0 slash 19. I'll put my mouse right there, this guy. And let's ask for the detailed statement. Now, this is going to give us all the information for spanning tree. Now, we're only running VLAN 1. But if I had 20 different spanning trees, I'd get the details for FA019 for all the different spanning trees. Now, this is specifying the local port cost. That means from a spanning tree perspective, this port on this switch is going to have a cost of 19. The port priority is 128. And remember, spanning tree is a lot like golf. The lower, the better. The port identifier is the priority followed by the port ID. So that's normally in like 3560s. It's going to be the physical port plus two. Something about the SNMP IF index and how far away a port is from the power supply and motherboard. It's a long story. It doesn't really even matter. On 3560s, it's simply two more than the physical interface. So the port identifier is the priority and then the actual port ID. And then it specifies the root. Now, this is kind of self-serving because this is our switch one saying, yeah, the root has a priority of 4097, and that's his base, base MAC address. It's also true that that's the switch we're looking at. But every switch in spanning tree for VLAN 1 is going to have this line that's highlighted be the same. Everybody's going to know the, the priority and the base MAC address of the actual root, which, as you know, is the bridge ID. So we have the priority and the MAC address make up the bridge ID. And then it's specifying the designated bridge. Now, the designated bridge for every segment, we're going to have a designated port or designated bridge. And in this case, because we are the root, the designated bridge has a priority of 4097. Again, very self-serving. It's him and has a base MAC address of 0019. So the bridge ID of the root is the same as the bridge ID for the designated port or designated switch for this segment right here because it is the root. I mean, on a root switch, everything's going to be designated. Everything's going to be forwarded. And then it's specifying that the designated port, he's still talking about himself right here. So he's saying, okay, the designated port, which is me, is the ID is 12821, which is right here, the priority in the port ID, and the designated path cost is zero. Basically what that's saying is the designated port to get to the root is this guy, and because I am the root, it's a cost of zero. I don't have to go through any interfaces to get there. It's me. So we're going to take a look at these same details as we work further away from the switch. So let's go down to switch number three. Now, switch number three has a port that leads up to switch one. It's got a port that leads over to switch two and two ports that lead down to switch number four. So let's jump over on switch three and do the same thing. Show spanning tree. And we only have one VLAN, so we can leave it at that. And it says, OK, I know who the root is. The root has a bridge ID of 4097 and 00190C. 060C9080. And every switch is going to know who the root is for VLAN 1, assuming the spanning tree has converged, which it has here. The cost for this switch, our switch 3 thinks that my cost to get to the root is 19, a cost of 19. Why is that? This is critical. The reason that switch 3 believes it's a cost of 19 to get to switch 1 is partly because switch 3's interface that he's using to get to the root, his root port right here, has a cost of 19. But it's also because the BPDUs that were advertised by the root switch 
said that the designated port for this segment, which is switch one's port right here, has a cost of zero. So a downstream switch is going to take the BPDUs it received, the cost there, at its own cost port and total that for the value or the cost it would take to get to the root. So that's why this guy's 19. As we get down to switch four, we're going to see values being added in. So he knows who the root is. That's great. He knows what the cost is, and he also knows what the root port is, which is FA0 slash 19, which is port ID 21. Go take a look at 19, <laughs> which is the root port, and that'll be a lot better to look at. All right, so here we go. So there's the details about this port, FA019, with its priority, its path cost, and its port identifier, which is the priority, and then in this case of a 3560, it's two numbers above the physical interface. Now it's talking about the root. Who is the root? Well, the designated root, which is talking about switch one, has a priority of 4097 with a base MAC address of this. And we all know that this line represents the bridge ID. That's why switch one is the root, because he has such a low priority. Lower is better. Then it's specifying who the designated bridge is for this segment. Now, because I'm looking at FA019, the designated uh, bridge for this segment is switch one's port FA019. So as a result, the advertised designated bridge for this segment here happens to exactly match the information about the root. Why? Because this is the actual port of the root that was advertising it out. So that part's identical. Then we have the designated port. Now this designated port is the port information that we're getting from switch one. And it says, okay, it's 12821, but check this out. The designated path cost is zero. That's because when switch one advertised the BPDs down, switch one said, hey, the cost for me to get to the root is zero. Switch three said, okay, great. Deciding on that this was the, the lowest cost path, said the cost of this port is 19, plus the zero you sent me is a total value of 19. So we should see that if we do a show spanning tree right here, that for FA0 slash 19, that the cost to get to the root is 19. And that's because it's the cost of the port plus the zero in the BPDs we got from the root to go ahead and get there. Now check this out. Switch three is forwarding on all ports. Holy shnikers. It's forwarding on FA021. It's forwarding on FA24 and 23. This guy is not the root because he has a root port facing the root, but he is forwarding everywhere else. Somebody's got to be blocking. Well, it's not the root, and it's not switch three. It's got to be switch number two. So let's go over and take a look at switch number two. On switch two, we'll do a show spanning tree. If my keyboard will work. All right, so there's the show spanning tree on switch number two. And if we take a look at the details, everybody knows who the root is. And that's not news. Everybody agrees which one is the root. He's got a bridge ID of 4097 with this base MAC address as part of it. The cost for switch two to get to the root is 19 also. Why? Because his root port has a cost of 19. That's FA023. And the BPDs that were advertised from the switch one from the root had an advertised cost of zero. So switch two said, okay, this is my best port, lowest cost which is zero, advertised by the root, plus 19. It's going to be a cost of 19 to get there, and that's off port 23. Now, let's take a look at this guy right here. Here's our blocking for this little portion of our would-be loop right here. Switch 2 and switch 3 both figured out that they were not the root. So when they figured that out, they said, great, we're not the root. We need to decide what the cheapest cost to get to the root is. And switch 2 picked FA023, and switch 3 picked FA019. No problem there. Now the question is, who gets to be the designated forwarder for the F8021 interface, which they're both connected to? It's got to be switch three or switch two. Now they're both equal cost from the root. If switch two had a lesser cost to get to the root, he would be the designated forwarder for the segment. But they're both equal. They're both 19. So how do they fight it out as far as who gets to be designated for this little segment right here? It comes down to the bridge ID between switch two and switch three. See, if we do a show detail, our show spanning tree 
and we say interface FA0 slash 21, which is this interface right here on switch number two, detail, you'll notice that this guy he tried, I mean, I'll give him a fighting chance. When he came up, or since we you know reset the counters, he sent out a few BPDUs in a struggle to say, I wonder if I can be the designated port for this segment. He received, however, BPDUs from Switch 3. See that received right there? And that's over time. Every two seconds, they're pumping new BPDUs out. And so in those BPDUs, it explained to Switch number two that the bridge, pri the bridge ID of the guy who was sending those was 32769. And Switch 2 says, wait, that's mine. I've got that same you know, bridge priority as well. What makes you better? And the designated bridge, unfortunately, has this MAC address. If you compare this MAC address, which is part of Switch 3's bridge ID, and you compare that to Switch 2's MAC address, see the 0019 for Switch 2 and the 0018 for Switch 3? Because of the MAC address, that makes Switch 3 a better looking BPDU. So Switch 2 said, okay, I get it. I'm getting BPDUs on this interface. I'm getting BPDs on this interface. This is my, my best path. That's my root port. And I am not, I don't have a better BPDU than what I'm getting as far as the bridge ID. And I will go ahead and block. And that's why we are blocking. Why is it called an alternate port? Well, switch two is still receiving BPDUs on this interface. That means that somebody upstream towards the actual switch, the root switch, is able to connect. So if I ever lose FA0 slash 23, I can alternatively go ahead and start using FA0 slash 21 if I no longer have parallel paths. So from Switch 2's perspective, we've got the information about this port itself, which is 21, saying what the cost is. We're specifying who the root is, and we're learning that from the BPDs that are coming in from Switch 3, and the designated bridge talks about Switch 3 itself, who has a better bridge ID than us. That's why he's designated and we're blocking. And then it's specifying the path cost. Now, this is this 19 is switch three saying, oh, that my cost to get to the root is 19. He passes that over to switch two. So if switch two ever started using this interface, 21, to get to the root, he would go ahead and have a path cost of 19 plus this advertised path cost from the designated switch for that segment. So let's move down to switch four where it gets really, really interesting. So as far as forwarding goes, the root switch is forwarding on both. Switch three, because of his bridge ID, is forwarding on all of them. Switch two is blocking on FA0 slash 21. And what happened to this port? Hold on a second. We're missing a port. Hold on on switch two. I'm missing a port. Let's do a show run for interface FA0 slash 20. <clears throat> hmm. Looks like it's up. Let's go check it out on switch four because we should have that port responsible. And let's do a show run for interface FA zero slash 20. And it looks like it's up. Let's do a show CDP neighbors, verify layer two connectivity. And I do not have a connection right there between those two guys. Hmm. Okay, so let's look into that together. So switch to port 20 and port 20 but I don't have hmm, show interface status. That's really interesting to me. Switch to FA0 slash 20. Oh, it's air disabled. <laughs> okay, when, when we turned on, uh, when we disabled spanning tree, it's very likely something nasty happened. So it's air disabled. That's why we're not seeing any CDP or anything else. Let's go fix that. <laughs> Ouch. So config T. Interface FA0 slash 20. The way you fix error disabled is you shut it and no shut it. And that'll bring it up. And let's go check out that port on a switch four as well. Yeah, nothing on switch four is out. So that should bring that up in just a moment. So we go over to switch two. Spanning tree should be kicking in. So on spanning tree, look at that. He's going through his listening state. Next, he'll be going through learning state. <laughs> there we go. So he's listening, learning, 15 seconds each. And then finally, he can go to forwarding if he wins as far as being the designated 
uh, bridge for that segment between Switch 2 and Switch 4. And I think he will. Why? Because he's got better cost. Switch 2 has a much better cost to get to the root than Switch 4 will. So as a factor of being the least cost device, he's going to win it. That's my guess anyway. All right, so there we go. So we are forwarding. We are the root port on 23 going up. We are blocking on 21 going over to switch 2 or switch 3 on the left. And then we are the designated forwarder on FA0 slash 20. All right, so let's go down and take a look at switch 4 and see what's going on there. Again, spanning tree loops or <clears throat> layer 2 broadcast storms and layer 2 loops, a very dangerous scenario. So show spanning tree. And let's take a look at what our four believes. At least we have four interfa three interfaces, which is great. So we have 23, 24, and 20 all sitting there at our disposal. So here's the spanning tree output on switch four. And also here are the identifiers of the spanning tree that we've identified based on looking at each of these switches. We have the root, who's forwarding or designated on all ports. Switch 2's root port is FA23, and Switch 3's root port is FA019. Why? Because those were the lowest cost paths to get to the root, period. When they had to duke it out here, Switch 2 had a worse bridge ID, and as a result, it didn't become the designated port for this segment. Switch 3 did, and Switch 2 said, okay, I'll do blocking on that port. Then we took a look at Switch 4, which we're here right now. And Switch 4, check it out. He is being told by Switch 2... See, those BPDs are coming in. And by Switch 3, about the root. And why did Switch 4 choose Switch 3 over Switch 2? I'd like to investigate that. First of all, let's take a look at the BPD-related information that Switch 4 is receiving. So to, see, to find that, we'll do a show spanning tree for interface FA0-20. I'll put my mouse right there. And we'll ask for a detailed view. Now let's go through this real quick. This, the first line is about the details of this physical port, port 20 on switch four. It says my path cost is 19 if regarding this port and the port priority is 128, which is the default. And the port ID is the port priority and the port ID put together. So the port ID again is two above the physical interface. So port 20 would have a port ID of 22. And then we have the designated route. Well, everybody in spanning tree is advertising about that you know, pesky designated root, that's switch one. That's not going to change. Now, this next line is switch two's advertisements about himself. He's saying, okay, my BPDs are coming in. I want to tell you, Mr. Switch 4, that my, my bridge ID is 32,769, and my MAC address is this, which is really the whole thing is the bridge ID. So switch two advertise that down, and then he's also specifying that my cost – to get to the root, this is Switch 2's opinion, is 19. So if you have other choices that are better, go for it. But if the total cost is lower going through me, Switch 2, use me. Well, Switch 4 has conflicting information. It also has information being advertised from Switch 3, who's also saying, hey, hey, vote for me, vote for me. So if we take a look at the detail for FA0-23, check this out. Now, this is the information that we are learning on this port right here. So this port, port 23, has a cost of 19. The priority is 128. That's old news. It also knows about the root, and that's because that's included in every BPDU that goes through the spanning tree. Every two seconds is identifying the root's bridge ID. And the reason the root is the root is because his bridge ID is the best. Now it's talking about the designated port. This is switch three. On switch three is FA023 that's advertising saying, okay, this is my bridge ID that I personally have that I'm advertising that's going down. So the two pieces of information that are in the BPDU are the root information and the designated port that's forwarding the BPDUs. So the switch two, uh, switch three on the left here is saying that here's my port ID, which is the priority and the port ID, and here's my cost. So take a look at this. Now what is Switch 4 going to do? I mean, Switch 4 has two possibilities. He says, well, let's see. Wait a sec. Both FA020 and FA023 locally, they both have a cost of 19 on my local physical interface. And Switch 2 is saying right here that Switch 2's cost for Switch 2 to get to the root is 19. So if my cost is 19, 
plus the 19 switch two is telling me about, my cost to the root would be 38. Then he's taking a look at the BPDs coming in from switch three. Switch three is saying, oh, my cost is 19. And so switch four says, well, my local port cost is 19, plus your cost of 19. It would cost a, a total of 38 to use switch three. What they call that in the races is that's a photo finish where it's a tie, an equal race, if you will, as far as cost is concerned. Spanning tree will always choose the one with the lowest cost. If for some reason Switch 2 had a lower cost, it wouldn't be a contest. Switch 4 would choose Switch 2 to use as a root port, and it would block going to Switch 3. So with things being equal, how come Switch 4 chose Switch 3 over Switch 2? And the reality is it came down to the bridge ID for Switch 3 and Switch 2. It said, well, everything else is equal, said Switch 4. So I'm going to go ahead and compare your bridge IDs, which is this line right here. Switch 2 on the right has a priority of 32,769 and a MAC address beginning with 0019, that entire line making up the bridge ID. The same equivalent from his counterpart, Switch 3, same priority, but check out the MAC address. That one digit from a 9 over to an 8 right here makes that a better or superior, if you will, bridge ID than compared to Switch 2. And it's for that reason, my friends, that Switch 4 chose to use Switch 3. It was a better bridge ID from two different switches. So now's the next problem. So now we know we want to use Switch 3 instead of Switch 2, but check this out. Switch 3 is actually advertising on two ports. So Switch 3 is advertising on port 23, but it's also advertising... I bring that up again. He's also advertising on port 24. So now how do we choose? I mean, it, we simply have to choose one or the other. The advertised cost that Switch 3 is telling us about is 19 for both ports. But check this out. If we have a tiebreaker, the tiebreaker is going to be the advertised port priority. Now, Switch port 23 is advertising down to us the port ID, which is the port priority of 128.25. And port 24 is advertising 128.26. And because spanning tree is like golf, the lower the score wins. And because everything else was equal from the two sets of BPDs we were getting, we are going to go with the one that had the lowest port priority because that port priority, that port ID is really tied to port priority. You want to see this flip? Check this out. I'm going to go ahead up to switch three. And on switch three, if we, oh, there's our information right there. It's showing us the port priority for 23 and 24. So I'm on switch three looking at these two ports. And the advertised port priority is 128 for both of them. We can simply change that. Right now, switch four is forwarding on 23 because he believed that was a superior BPDU because of the lower port priority. So if we go to 24, like this, and say spanning tree, uh, priority, maybe it's port priority, maybe it's P something. Yeah, okay, port, it's, it's port and priority. Okay, port, priority, and let's set it down to 16. Remember, lower is better. So if we set FA024 to 16, the new BPDs that we're advertising down to switch four are going to say, oh, the port priority is 16, everything else being equal. Switch four is going to flip over and start using 24 as its root port. All right, so let's take a look at switch four. Now, if we do a show spanning tree for 23 and a show spanning tree for 24, get those both on the screen for you and I'll get rid of anything else that was there. So now take a look. Now it's telling us that on port 24, the BPDs that we received, the port ID is 16, which is the priority, and that's going to beat out 128, which is 23, which is the, the port priority being advertised. So it's the advertised priority by the upstream switch that's closer to the root that controls which one we're going to choose. So if we do a show spanning tree for VLAN 1, take a look at this. We're now forwarding on port FA0 slash 24. Now, it did go through listening and learning states. 
we took more than 30 seconds to get there, but that's what happened. If we go back and we go to switch three and we say, you know what, let's just take that off. We'll say no and go back. Take a look at this. Show spanning tree. <laughs> it's still forwarding on port 24. Let me make sure I put the right commands in. Switch three. No spanning tree, port priority 16. That looks good to me. Show spanning tree. Okay, so we changed it back. Switch four should be figuring that out. Oh, there we go. So now we're in the listening state for FA0 slash 23. I don't have rapid spanning tree turned on. If I did, this would be over within seconds. But if we wait a few seconds and do show spanning tree again, should we go through learning, which it is, and eventually it'll start forwarding. Meanwhile, <laughs> your users are toast if they need to communicate on VLAN 1 through the network because that's 30 seconds of downtime. Not a great idea. Um, turning on rapid spanning tree would be a great, great benefit as well. Okay, so let's take this. Now our diagram matches this again. Let me show you a couple other things that are really quite important to getting this. Why does Switch 4 believe it's a cost of 38? The answer is he knows that the local port has a cost of 19, and he also knows that the advertised cost from Switch 3, which we can see that advertised cost in the BPDU-related information that is right here, that Switch 3 is advertising a cost of 19. Does that mean if we change the cost on Switch 3 to something lower, that a lower value will be advertised to Switch 4, and Switch 4 will have a, a different spanning tree as a result, a different cost? The answer is yes. We can change that from 38 on Switch 4, and we can change that to a lower number by simply modifying what Switch 3's opinion is. Or better yet, we could actually tell Switch 2 that it has a better cost, and this entire spanning tree would flip. In fact, let's do that. Let's go over to Switch 2, and let's tell Switch 2 that its cost on FA0 slash 23 is like, let's use, um, how about 18 instead of 19? We'll lower it by 1. As a result, the new BPDU is coming down to Switch 4. We're going to say, oh, wow, your cost is only 18. Your cost is 19. He'll add his 19 to the 18. That'll be his total cost to get to the root, and he'll start forwarding up FA0 FA slash 20. So up here at switch to, we'll go into interface FA0 slash 23. Again, it's not, the, it's not the cost on the port that goes down to the downstream switch. It's the cost that goes towards the root. Because switch two is saying, the way I'm getting to the root, my cost, what I believe it is, is 19. And that's what gets advertised downstream down to these switches down here. So interface FA0 slash 23, we'll simply say, simply say spanning tree cost, and we'll go one under 18. Now with that, again, rapid spanning tree is not on, so we're going to have to go through listening and learning and some <clears throat> updates. But at the moment, these new updates are being sent every two seconds from switch two down to switch four. Switch four saying, oh, wow you've got a better cost than either of the BPDUs that Switch 3 is sending, I'm going to use you instead. So if we go to Switch 4, and here's the output of our old spanning tree, where we had the root on FA0 slash 23, this guy right here. And if we do a show spanning tree again, with any luck, yeah, he's flipped over. So he's now using 20, and he is now blocking on both of these. Why does it say alternate? Because we're still receiving BPDUs, if this interface shuts down for some reason, we will start to figure out, okay, I've got an alternate path to the root, and I'll start forwarding on one and blocking on the other. The other cool thing is this. Look at the cost. Why is it 37? Well, it's because this. It's because switch 4 says my local cost is 19 on my root port, and the advertised cost that switch 2 is telling me, which is his cost to get to the root, is only 18. And let's go ahead and take a look at that. So to show, I've got this in my history, FA000 slash 20. And here it is. So there's the advertised cost that Switch 2 says is his opinion to get to the root. And it's that one little change that makes Switch 4 believe that the better path is up through Switch 2. It's all about cost. The lower the cost, the better the path. And as far as 
aggregating or, or adding them up together, if I had six switches in a row, I would say, great, to find out the final cost, I would take the root switch, which is a cost of zero being advertised, the next downstream switch, add what its cost is to get to the root, and that would be propagated down to the next switch, who would add its cost to get to the root, and all those values added together are going to be the final switch at the very end's cost, including the port that we're using, the root port at that very last device, that would be the total cost to get to the root, is the cost of this port plus the cost of the root port on switch two, in this case, because we're doing the forwarding here, and that's how it's determined. It's important to understand how spanning tree operates. And we haven't even you know, touched on rapid spanning tree as far as how it operates, or multiple spanning tree, or per VLAN spanning tree plus. There's lots of options, but the core, the heart and soul of spanning tree is about identifying the least cost path and using that as we build this loopless environment at layer two. I appreciate you sticking with me. I've enjoyed presenting this and I'll see you in the next video.